like to thank you all for joining us here this evening. My name is David Moore, and I'm the senior archaeologist with the Exploring Jorah Foundation. Um, it's a delight to see you here. We, we've invited you to share a little refreshments with us this evening um, as a way of introducing to you, on behalf of the Exploring Jorah Foundation, uh, the upcoming regional and local events for the 450th anniversary of the founding of Fort San Juan and what we call the Spanish and Indian Colonial Trail. And this is, this is our initiative to bring a new cultural and heritage trail 600 miles from the coast of South Carolina at Santa Elena all the way through South Carolina and the North Carolina Piedmont into the uh, mountains of East Tennessee, all linked together on this Spanish trail. And this is a trail that's linked with existing Native American populations, and we are bringing this all together as a way of helping educate people about this 16th century history, which really is the foundation for the early colonial story here in the interior. Um, those of you that are here have heard a lot about this story, or some of you for almost 30 years, um, but most people still don't know about it. So we're using this anniversary year as a way to reach people across the state and across the region. We're partnering with folks down at Santa Helena and all the way to, to the Sequoia birthplace in Bonor, Tennessee, Morganton is going to be the hub of this new trail and we'll be focused at, at the Catawba Meadows Living History Village which we hope to develop and expand along with the city um, and we will we have our first professional exhibit on the Berry site uh, that will be opening to the public on Saturday March 18th of this year and this is exhi an exhibit we're very proud of and, and excited about. This exhibit by itself will be bringing a lot of new visitors to town. Um, I, I'd like to uh, take a moment also to mention that we have a, a major festival, a, a one-of-a-kind festival that's never been attempted before. Um, and this is going to be a, a uh, kind of a, a powwow, but it'll be different from any other powwow you've ever been to because it will be the first historical reenactment of this amazing event of Captain Juan Pardo meeting the Indian chiefs at Chihuahua 450 years ago. And it was just 450 years ago this month that they began building Fort San Juan. So this is going to be an amazing event. No one anywhere has ever carried off an interpretation of a reenactment like this anywhere in the country. So this is going to be an exciting prospect as well as that event will be will be helping to organize similar events in East Tennessee and with the Catawba Nation to make this a regional coordinated effort over this next year to year and a half. We also have a, a major fundraising benefit auction taking place at the Hickory Metro Center on Friday, April, uh, March 17th, the night before we open the exhibit at the Clinton Museum. And we'd love to invite all of you out to that event. Um, and we just look forward to engaging with you, with the city, with the county, and, and local business people in this venture that we're convinced is going to lead us to just a tremendous growth in heritage tourism and local educational opportunities that will be attractive to the whole state, the entire region. So um, I want to thank uh, Marie Palacios, our executive director, and ask her to come up and say a few words to you, and also uh, Melissa Timo, our staff archaeologist over here, who got all this ready for us this evening, and again, welcome. I hope you have a few minutes just, if you haven't had a chance to see the exhibit downstairs and up on the, the second floor there, um, this is just a preview 
of the exhibit that will be opening at the museum on March 18th. So Marie, I'd like to give you the floor. Good evening. So David already shared some of the exciting things that are happening with the 450th and kind of sharing the story of Fort San Juan and Jawara. As most of you know, Exploring Jawara Foundation was formed as the public archaeology arm of these excavations and not just of the Berry site but other preservation efforts here in the community. So I just wanted to take two minutes to share some exciting things that have happened in the last few months and some of the exciting things that EJF as an organization is working towards. Many of you, if you've been out to Catawba Meadows, you will notice that phase one, which was the native phase that we proposed to the city several years ago, is now complete. The Pfeiffer Johnson House, which is the, the steep roofed, ho roofed house, was just completed using almost all completely natural um, I said materials, 90% would you say, David? 90% of that structure was established using the very same materials the natives would have used there hundreds of years ago. And our friends at the local bb and even came out and got their hands dirty to help us daub that space. And then the Huffman Cornwall House, which was the first structure that um, showed up on that site that we worked on, was also completed. A palisade structure was completed. And Community Foundation of Burke helped make possible an outdoor pavilion space so that students can continue to do programs there, rain or shine because we see thousands of students from not just Burke County Schools, but from across the region each year. So we're so thankful for those donors. We're also excited because we became one of the first, or if not the first groups in Burke County to receive the GlaxoSmithKline Ribbon of Hope Award, and we're funded $25,000 to promote our public archeology span programs, specifically Melissa's programs, and we will be targeting our local fourth through eighth graders in the Burke County Public Schools we're scheduled to meet with the um, library system this week. We'll be offering two programs in each of our local branches. So you'll be seeing EJF out in the community. We also received um, a $10,000 grant from another source to continue the programming that Melissa has started. She's created a menu of close to 30 new programs. So we're seeing EJF grow. And as of November, Melissa became our first full-time staff member. So exciting things happening. And the reason I mention this is because the stronger EJF is as an organization, the stronger impact we will have in the community because we're really here to impact the students, young and old alike, in our community and get their hands dirty, get them engaged in the archaeology and the cultural heritage that is so rich in our community. So those are just a few highlights of some of the work that EJF is doing. As David mentioned, we're working hard on the museum exhibit and we invite you to all partner with us on that. We are over the halfway mark of raising the $50,000 needed to make that exhibit possible. We're still working to raise the, the balance of those dollars. That exhibit will be on site at the History Museum of Burke for two years. So imagine when you were younger and you went to Roanoke or you went to um, William, um, Williamsburg or you went to all those places to see and live the history, Old Salem. Old Salem, excuse me, I've had a cold. Um, just imagine the kids in our community are gonna have a space to go to see that history, because sometimes if they go out to the Berry site and it's winter time, they're seeing a field with plastic over it. And it's hard for them to imagine what that space might have looked like. Catawba Meadows is the living history interpretation to allow them to see what life would have been like, but there's really not been a museum component. And this will give students a full day experience. They can go to the museum, they will get to go to the Berry site, they can go to Catawba Meadows. They can build a program that meets their students' needs. So this is extremely exciting. And after the initial two years, we've had other groups across the state and even in other states express interest in hosting this exhibit. So we encourage you to get involved if you know a local business or individual that would like to help us meet that goal of getting the exhibit completely paid for so that we do not cut into EJF's programming cost. That would be a tremendous blessing, not only for the organization, but for the community as a whole. So thanks for coming out tonight. We appreciate it. If you have any questions about our programs, Melissa's here. And I'm here to discuss anything you would like as far as EGF. If it's archaeology questions, these two are your people, not me. <laughs> so have a wonderful evening. And please help yourself to refreshments. Thanks for coming out. <laughs>